We flew him all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's a 23-year-old badass of Bellator. You might know him as the Phenom, Aaron Pico. And I'm feeding him my favorite breakfast burritos in all of LA on this week's Food Truck Diaries. Well, I hope you like breakfast, dude. I love I've, breakfast. I've had these before, man. Amazing. They're my fave. <laughs> I always get the Rico Suave in there. That's what we're known for, honestly. I'll tell you, I'm not, I'll get that one. The Rico Suave, yeah, yeah, please. Thank you. The basic bitch, huh? Probably stay away from that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the Rico Suave, please. And then they have this nice, like, uh, salsa, too. I was getting two. Hell yeah, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> Thank you for doing this, no, man. Thanks for having me I've been me a on. fan for a long time. No, I appreciate it. I'm constantly on the horn hyping you up, man. No, I, I appreciate it. You've been loyal to me. You, you've always, even during my losses and stuff, you always said you're still believing me. So I, I really appreciate that, you know? Yeah, so. I, I think with you, it's, 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 it's this timing thing where mixed martial arts is kind of, it's still in its infancy stages. Like, yeah. it's pretty new, man. And so there was like Roy McDonald, who's good at everything, who came up doing MMA, but we've never had kind of like a, a prodigy, like a, a, a phenom where we saw this young kid who's good yeah. at wrestling, world class, wrestling, yeah. boxing, and then he, he's just doing all this to get to mixed martial arts. Yeah. So you're kind of the first one. Yeah. You know, you're kind of the, the guinea pig of that kind of uh, that, that culture, that phenom culture. Yeah. So I don't know, I just gravitated towards it and then I would always put myself in your shoes. Like I was working for Beltor, I was working the desk when you fought okay. at Mass Square Garden. Yeah. I just remember thinking, you know, when I made my UFC de debut, I think I was like 26, 27. Yeah. But I had some other life experiences like in football, you know, big football games and, you know, other pretty cool things. I was thinking about you, I'm like, yeah. what, the, what the fuck is he doing, man? Yeah, yeah. It's nuts. It, it was, it, it was. It was a little weird. It, it just because I just didn't know. You didn't know what to really expect. Of course, you've had like pancreation fights and like kids MMA stuff, but then when you go to like a Madison Square Garden, a venue, it's a lot different. It's a lot, a lot different. And there's all the cameras and and lights and yeah, it was it was a disaster, honestly. But it was. Uh, see, I don't, it is, I don't, I don't what do it that is. way yeah. at all, man. Yeah. yeah. But I, the thing is, is like I was nervous, but I just was like it was kind of weird because before the fight, I was. I wasn't really nervous, and usually I'm nervous, and so I just, I didn't know what to expect. Like, yeah. it was just, it's hard to explain. I don't even, to be honest, I don't even remember the day. I don't even know, remember the fight. It's a lot, right? Yeah, it was just like happening so fast, like this, 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 and that, and then all of a sudden, like I remember Stitch, like Stitch Durant was putting the um, the Vaseline on me. He's like, all right, well, well, that's all I remember. Welcome to the big leagues. That's all I remember. Yeah. And then I don't remember they anything don't else. So, yeah, it was kind of weird. It just, stuff was happening so fast, and, uh, but like I said, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, so. what a great experience, yeah. though. No matter win, win, lose, or draw, what a great experience, man. Yeah. Because I, I think also, I think more people can relate to a guy like you who we've seen, you know, you have all the skill in the world and you've, you know, you've had some losses, but it's so early, man. Yeah. It's so, who gives yeah. a shit? Yeah, I'll it's have kids come to me like, dude, I lost my, my amateur fight. I'm like, well, dude, dude, who, no one, nobody cares, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm telling you, nobody cares. Yeah. And I think with you, especially that fight, no one really cares, dude. No one cares. Right. Then you went on a tear. Then you got, you fought some good competition, and then you know had had some issues. Then you're back on the winning track. But it's yeah. like, this is the fight game, man. Like not everyone's John Jones. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not that you don't have the skill of John, but I think sometimes people look at a Floyd Mayweather or a John Jones and they think that's like the that's the way it goes. Yeah. It's like it's not though. Everybody, it's just not. The old saying, like everybody always says, everybody's path is different, and that's truly that's truly how it is. You can't like you can't like try to compare like oh John does it this way, so you have to be there. Floyd does it. Yeah. Everybody is completely different, and then when you finally get that through your head, like. You'll be, you're gonna be, okay, you, you don't have, like, for me, I always wanted to be undefeated, honestly. When I was a kid, I was yeah, like, man, I look does. at Floyd, yeah. I was like, man, I wanna I be know. undefeated. And uh, obviously life takes you in a different turn, but you can't be like, you can't compare yourself or try to do this. You're your own person and your own journey is completely different. But I also, uh, and I think it's because I, I've been in, not in your shoes at your age, but yeah. I've been in the, in the big show, I've been there where now the outside looking in, when I look at your fights, even the fights you win, if you get caught with something or maybe something doesn't go right, as a, as a fan of yours and, and what I think you're gonna go on to do, I'm like, man, I'm glad it's happening now yeah. instead in, until 
you know, instead of when he gets to the, the big, big title shot, you know? Yeah, no, So it's like I these totally learning agree. things, there's only one way to learn, man. No. Unfortunately, the path you're on, the way you're learning is everybody else is learning too. And yeah. they're not all on board Aaron Pico's trade, you know? Yeah. That's just a bummer, especially yeah. at your age, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. At the end of the day, like, for me, it's just one fight at a time, one training session at a time, and just try to evolve as a martial artist. Oh, you're built for this, brother. I'm not worried yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not worried that's, about it. You know? yeah, that's yeah. a big, that's, a, and, and for me, I, I just want to get time in the cage now, yeah. you know, just time in the cage, relaxing, and this fight, I really felt good in there, and, and like, the seven months that I didn't yeah, fight, I was, I was just working with Greg, Six Gun, all the coaches there, and just calming my, calming myself down, even the pad sessions, like, it would be turning up, okay, now let's slow down the fight, let's practice slowing things down, and, okay, and uh, in the fight, I, I remember everything in the fight. All my fights before, I didn't remember anything. Even the fights that, that I would win. Weird, man? It's so weird. I, like, people would say, like, what happened? I, 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 I didn't remember anything that went on. Even the fights that I did win. This fight was the first time that I actually walked myself through the fight. I was like, I could hear what Greg and the coaches were saying, and it's it's a beautiful feeling when it's, you it's, when it's you do mature, it. It's a mature like experience thing too. I, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, same way. I, I remember certain fights I'd get in the back and they'd go, oh man, do you remember this? I, I don't remember any of it, man. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw, I, I don't remember any of this. It, it's and true. I'd watch the film like, what is happening, dude? Yeah. I think it's just literally getting that experience yeah. and knowing, you know, and, and downloading the data. That education of experience is priceless, man. And there's like, there's really no way to learn about it. <laughs> I, I'd say you've done the best coming up for, you know, from, uh, from boxing to wrestling to pancreation, like you've you've done all the right steps to get there. Man. Yeah, yeah. Now it's just time and experience in the cage, in in under the you know the lights and the arenas. There's like I said, money can't buy it. Nothing. Nothing. You, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you just can have do. to do it. Nothing and, can uh, do. Yeah, isn't it crazy? It, it's weird. Yeah, it's, yeah, a weird it's, thing. it's, it's so weird, man. <laughs> yeah. you know, there's nothing you can do for it to to replace the experience, man. But you're getting it. But I so in, in your fights when I watch, there's so much like. You're like this fucking race car, man. You just want to get the. You just want to, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I see it. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah. want to. I can. I can just. I can. When you're in there, yeah. I, you're just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. chill a little yeah. bit. Chill yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That's true. That's like, before people would always say, just go in there and relax. Just that's all you got to do is just relax. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah, relax. Okay. And I'm like, I would tell Coach Greg that that's what they would say before. Just relax and they're going there and relax and just let. But there's like. Before now, like with with Coach Greg, is like so many positions that we're working on. Like, okay, now what what do we do to slow down the fight? What are we what are we looking for on the ground, on the on the feet? You know, before I would be like one thing: oh, I have to get the takedown, or I have to do this. But Greg is just telling me, just let the fight happen. Yeah. You're calm, but you're not like, oh, I'm relaxing there. And I, no, you're like a calm intensity. Yes. You're just very focused and let the yeah. let the fight happen and do and do what you've been doing all this training camp and. This fight, I really felt good. I really, really felt like, I always say, I just remember the fight. Before, I don't, I don't remember any of my no. fights, even the fights that I won. But this fight was the first time I really felt like I saw everything, I heard everything, what the coaches were telling That's me. That's so cool, man. And uh, the only thing I can say, like I said, it's a beautiful feeling, and I'm happy that yeah. I got to feel it. Because yeah, people, I, I would say, man, am I going to ever get to that point? Because everything was happening so fast. You're like, damn, and especially coming off two losses, you, your last fight, you can't relate it to because it was like, it was like a loss, so like, and like I said, everything's happening so fast. So finally, when I got in there, and I, it felt it felt good. And I haven't. Not a, lot of pe a lot of people know this, but I, just, I was working with the sports psychologist this for this fight, and and uh, I it, at first I was kind of like skeptical, like ah, I don't know if it'll work, but. I really went and I started to like really, really uh, pay attention to the things that he was telling me to do, and it really, really helped me. So, and yeah. I really, and I liked it. You know, Dude. it may not be for everybody, for, but for me, it helped me. So, you know I'm what's happy, weird yeah. is, uh, especially when I was coming up, I remember, you know, it's, it's just it's just guys being guys. I remember there's one guy in the team who used a sports psychologist, and yeah. we kind of made fun of him. Yeah. I mean, the, our team was like the who's who, yeah. and I, I remember we kind of made fun of the guy, and then like two weeks later. George St. Pierre came to town, who, yeah. who's our guy, and uh, he had to leave practice early. Yeah. And I go, "Oh, where are you going?" He's like, "I'm with my, my sports yeah. psychologist. I work with him." And everyone's like, "Excuse me?" He's like, "Oh, yeah, I, I work with him nonstop. Yeah. Fight, no yeah. fight. Work with him." And then we were yeah. kind of like, "Well, if he's doing that," yeah. and I think he was kind of the first one to be like, "Well, he's the greatest of all time. So he's the most strongest mental person we know by yeah. far. And yeah. if he's doing it." that we probably should be doing it. And then he kind of knocked down that wall to make it okay to work with a sports psychologist. It's not that 
you know, that you're freaking out inside anything like that. It's just, yeah. it's just a tool to help you. It's yeah. definitely not going to hurt. No, no, it definitely, it's really, really helped me um, just calming, like, because you're always nervous, but calming your nerves and just, like, things to think about and exercises that we work on really, really helped me for yeah, this Yeah, George fight. used to yeah. say it's about, you'd say everyone has those butterflies. Yeah. Everyone, before every yeah. fight has those butterflies. Yeah. For him, it's about getting those butterflies to form a line and go to, yeah. to achieve the objective that he's yeah. trying to do. Yeah, because even like when you're in the back before a fight, like sometimes your mind, you want to like freak out. You're like, man, this and that. But uh, like like you said, you have to really like hold it together. And and uh, that's that's cool that George used the sport. Oh, sport dude, oh, he's, man. he's my all time favorite athlete. Have you ever met him? I met him one time at Wildcard. Just very, a while ago. A while ago, briefly, but uh, man, I, I I love that guy. God, I wish I get you, you two uh, need to get together. He's man. my favorite. He's my favorite favorite fighter. Oh, there's so many similarities. Yeah. You guys need to get together, man. The, yeah. Just being around him, yeah. and it's like the way he yeah. views the game, and just the yeah. how he, you know, for him, it, it's chess. For everybody else, yeah. it's checkers. Yeah. And the way he would put together a fight camp and just his his approach, and then you find what was fascinating to me is. With George St. Pierre, he was more scared than any of us. Yeah. In a locker room, he was a yeah. fucking mess, dude. <laughs> the fir first time I ever met him, I got off uh, doing the Ultimate Fighter. We just got out of the house, and Greg Jackson's like, hey, come with me. So I go with him, <laughs> and we're at this fancy hotel, and he takes me up to the penthouse. I'm like, what is happening? And uh, he goes, hey, just go in. I'm going to be right back. I'm like, who is it? He goes, it's, it's George St. Pierre. You guys met before him. Never met him. Nope, never met before him. <laughs> just go in there. I go, and me and George annoy each other, and he's in a towel. And it's, I think it's the day of the fight or, like, the day before. And he's in a towel going, I don't fucking know, Brendan. I don't fucking know. And he's, like, going back and forth pacing. I'm like, I'm sure fuck not going to talk. GSP, you know, yeah. I'm not gonna calm him down for this huge yeah, fight against yeah. Thiago Alves, you know. Yeah. But I just, I just remember seeing that and be like, holy fuck, he's just like us, man. Yeah, no, it's true. You, you and him together, man, would be such a good team. Yeah, it would be, it'd be really cool to go just pick his brain or even learn a few things from him. I'm, I don't really like, like fan out like too much, honestly. Like with any, but George St. Pierre, I honestly watch his fights. at maybe I watch his like two to three of his fights a week. I really Here's like the his thing style. about George. Really like as, as much as you love him as a competitor, yeah. he's an even better human being. Yeah, that, I know it's cliche to stay. No, that's what I hear. I hear a lot. And you, yeah, you want to talk about he's well read. Yeah. He's, he's so respectful. He takes care of everyone. Yeah. He's, he just he just does everything right, man. Where you're just yeah. like, oh, man, if I could just get 10 percent like George, I'm good. And just yeah. in life, yeah. he's such a good person. Man. Yeah, that, that's that's what I hear a lot too. Like, there's a lot of people that say that say that because. Uh, They'll say, yeah, he's a great competitor, but they also say he's a great, great human being. Yeah, just Greg, a, Greg just talks a dope very, person. very highly of him too. Like everybody, I've, I've never met somebody that said they didn't. Never, that, you're that, never that gonna he meet was anyone a, that, that he was an asshole. He was this or that. They just say he's a genuinely nice guy. So that's cool. That's cool to to hear. Yeah, now you're in the same tutelage as GSP was under. Yeah. You know, especially when GSP was in the thick of his career. You know, yeah. I'll see as for us. Yeah. You know, but George, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Greg Jackson would do a lot of that game plan stuff. And a lot of it was mental, man. Yeah. Because George was such a strong-minded yeah. yeah. person. You know, a lot went into that. Yeah. Is that is was that maybe did is that what drew you to Jackson's camp? Because yeah. just so so the viewers yeah. know, you switch camps. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. you're with Greg Jackson's yeah, camp. Yeah, I'm with I'm with Coach Greg and everybody at Jackson Wink. But no, I really really gel well with Coach Greg and all the coaches there. But. He's, uh, he, he's unique, honestly. I really, really like uh, his coaching style and just, like you said, keeping me calm too because in my, I'm very, like, you know, strong-minded too, want to work, 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 and, you know, he has a good way of breaking things down for me and, and, uh, and Greg has a good way of keeping all the coaches together and making sure that everybody's on the same page, you know, because you know how coaches, sometimes oh, it's hard in it's MMA, tough, you know, but... It's the toughest. Luckily for me, over there, they all work together and for me and they've all they've all had um a good uh, like a good vibe together yeah. there's no like okay go, coach greg says you need to work with everybody. yeah yeah coach greg needs to work tells them hey we need to work on this uh, no problem everybody's like okay and i don't know about the past like of course there's a lot of drama like that i've heard before but i don't you know don't myself about yeah that. I just, that's not you I, that's I, your, your I, chapter's I, different i use i use the same i just stay in my lane honestly 100 that's, that's what do you I, care? I show up to practice 15 minutes early and i get ready for practice i don't care what what beef people have nope. i stay in my lane and go to work that's the exact uh, mentality you should have uh, that's, and that's what, all you what can do, about, right? i'll say this about greg jackson is what makes greg jackson so special is 
He's mixed martial arts, Phil Jackson. Yeah. So he can take the Kobe's yeah. and the Shaquille O'Neal. He can do all that. He can do yeah. that with the Michael Jordan, Scottie yeah. Pippen, the best of the best, yeah. and make yeah. everybody somehow yeah. feel for sure. okay. For the for the last fight, the best was because we drove to the arena together, and, uh, and when I got out of the car, he says, you know, some he was just like very calm. He's like, you know, some people work, you know, at a desk job. Some people are actors. He's like. You're a fighter, let's grab your bag, let's go in there and clock in and get out. As soon as we walked out, he said, that was a good day at work, let's go get some food. We went to the pantry, got some food, and oh, I love it. went home and just like another That's day. That's it, man, work. Yeah, you don't yeah. make it a bigger deal Yeah, than he it wasn't is. like, oh yeah, he just I like, know. he just very, He's the not, best, yeah, it was cool. You walk around at how much? I honestly walk around like 165, and you, what, you watch your diet? I watch it pretty well, yeah. I, yeah, I watch it all, yeah. all the time. Man. I just honestly, don't, I don't like to get big. Like it just, yeah, one, fun. I don't like the way I look, and oh, two, and, yeah. and one, uh, it's just not good for you. No, hell no, it's not good for <laughs> it's you. It's not good for and you. And it makes it so much more work when you're in camp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You worry about losing weight. Like, I no, have this buddy, sure. he knows this, Mark Munoz, who's, yeah. Uh, we, you know Mark, right? Yeah, yeah he's of the course. Fucking yeah, yeah, he's but Mark would always, nice he loves rice. Okay. So Mark would always like blow up. Yeah. So his camp was basically him trying to lose weight, not focus yeah. on the fight, just him yeah. losing weight. Yeah. No, it's, I and make he weight. He's such a savage. I make weight like really, really easy. But to, honestly, like I start like when I'm really, really watching it, like a month and a half, two months out, like, like all my stuff is monitored and things like that. So I'm, because I love having, being on fight week and just like not concerned about about weight. No, like, you don't want to go in stress. Yeah, Can like you imagine? I, like the day before the weigh-ins, I'm eating three meals and I'm drinking electrolyte with water, like, yeah, and I make good. it really easy. Yeah, I, I re and people, people will always say that so they can, like, some people say, cause, so they don't want to like, go oh, like I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't cut weight. Yeah. But I honestly make weight really, yeah, really good. easy. You're yeah, one of those guys I make it really, really easy. Um, life in Albuquerque, you're enjoying it. So did you move to Albuquerque full time or are you just doing camps there? No, I moved out there full time. My girlfriend and I, two horses and our three dogs are out there. So the it's whole kind of, squad the whole squad, there, yeah. Huh? And yeah. how long ago was that? Um, I moved out there in July, full time. Okay. Yeah. Are you enjoying it? I actually, I really am enjoying it. Yeah, you're, a lot. You're it's an nice. Albuquerque dude, a little bit. You know this, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's, it's been from nice. Whittier, California, but yeah, yeah. I got on your Instagram. There's like you and horses and shit. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I like Albuquerque. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's nice. Honestly, we got we got the two stables in the backyard. We got a little horse ring. I could ride my horse out my front front door and just go all around you love town. That, huh? Yeah, I do. I really it's do. For yeah. you, man. Yeah, I, they. I came out to visit the family, packed up the horse trailer, and took the horses out here. So now the horses with us here, and then we'll go back. And yeah. before you went to Jackson's, you were at two previous camps, right? Um, for the most part, I was just at Team Body Shot with Antonio McKee. And yeah. Them. yeah, yeah, they're great. They're great. Yeah, I, I still talk to Antonio and all them, yeah. all those guys. So, yeah, AJ's in the in the Grand Prix. Yeah, that's I think right. he's gonna win it. I keep telling everybody. He's such I, a stunt, yeah, yeah, he's he's just so so diverse and so athletic. Yeah, diverse, and he's got a good yeah, good well chemistry with his dad and the yeah. father coaching and. They have things that work for them, and, and you guys came up together, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we've known team. each other since we were kids. Like, he, he was always at my house, spending the night yeah. over for barbecues and stuff. So, yeah, we're him and my dad are very close. And how, how tough was it for you to to leave Team Body Shop and find a new gym? It, it was honestly really it's so tough. Awkward, yeah, man. it's just. But for me, Antonio and I, like, we're so such like like family. They're just like if like if you feel that's the best thing for you, then hey, I'm all for it. And and Antonio still calls me, and we honestly we still talk on the phone. Like before the last fight, he's like, "You're fine. Work on what you need to work yeah. on." And one thing about Antonio, he said that over there, the, those guys over there will take good care of you. Greg yeah. Jackson is a great, great guy, and he's like, "I'm happy that you're over there with and them." How, you know? how did you obviously, you know, Greg's one of the most famous coaches, most famous camps, yeah. but they just don't take anyone. Yeah. How'd you decide on Greg Jackson out of all the camps? Yeah. There's so many good ones. AKA, yeah. ATT. Right? Yeah, one I've honestly I, I've liked Greg because I've seen him with GSP and yeah. I just like the way. And uh, one night I was just like, there's so much traveling that we're doing here, going from there, like all the practices and in one day. And I remember one guy, there was a guy named Dan that trains out there in Albuquerque. He was out here in California doing a camp with somebody, and uh, I just I was really tired that day and I was like man telling my brother man this is crazy going from this there there such a, and I made a comment you're saying in body shop in LA yeah and like I was Orange going to, yeah and I piece. was going to go train with somewhere somewhere and I saw Dan and I just made a comment I said how's Greg and everybody doing at Jackson Wink and he's like oh they're doing good everybody's good there man if they said hey whenever you want to come over 
let us know. So I got on the car. I said, man, maybe we should go, you know, give Jackson Wink uh, a try. So a family friend of ours knew, you know, Coach Greg, and they called him up and they said, why don't you come down and just try it out for three days and uh, see how you like it. So then I was on a flight. And the moment I went into Greg's office, felt it, right, huh? it felt honestly, it felt felt right. Just That's the way such he, such a blessing. Yeah, man. when you go into his office and the way he breaks things down, you know, I I felt right at home. And That's so being cool, with, man. You know, Coach Coach Gibson, Coach Wink, and you know, I work with uh, Jiu Jitsu coach Professor Tusa that I've been working with. Everybody's on the same page to help me, and they truly care about me. So I, I like yeah, it. Yeah, you know, you're in a good spot, man. Yeah. So, so that's how it all came about. I love that. Yeah. Man. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, can I get an extra side of the salsa? I haven't had a breakfast burrito in a long time. Yeah. Is there anything better than a breakfast burrito, I man? Think so. That's living. All right, man, I couldn't bring you all the way from Albuquerque and not feed you good food. <laughs> Albuquerque has really good food, man. You yeah, know the right spots to go. Yeah, they do that. I know they're like really big on their like green and red chili. And yeah, all uh, stuff, the but... green chili is the big one, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I like green chili, but my favorite is like red chili. Like, yeah, I like, I like green chili. too, but th especially with Albuquerque, you got to be careful with green chili. I just showed down there, man. I ate the wrong green chili. It's a tough night. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so with Jackson's, that, that's, yeah, just kind of. It just worked, right? Just the relationship worked, man. It did, yeah. And you're feeling it good did. about things? I feel really good about it. There's yeah, a I million feel... training partners down there. A lot of good partners. Yeah. Um, and honestly, the coaches there are really dedicated. They put a lot of time in there. Like, it feels like they're always at the gym working. And I know for me, I mean, they're always there for me, helping me. And, and the coaches are, like I said, the partners are there, so. You're still going pretty hard in training? I've heard some pretty fascinating stories about you in the training room. I think that it's kind of how you you came on my radar. There's a group of friends of mine who, who were professional fighters were talking about training with you and they were saying, and the, the, you know, this guy, he's world class. World, everybody would know he was world class. And he was like, oh dude, he beats the shit off all of us. I'm like, really? He's young as shit. Like, he beats the shit off all of us, man. <laughs> no, I'm right now, obviously in my fight, I mean, after my fight, like, I was in the room doing like jujitsu stuff like that, but then Coach Greg and the like I was like I'm gonna go home for like a week and a half down in Whittier. They're like that'll be good. Please no training like like just relax. because you need to relax. Because honestly, right now I'll, I'll train all the time. Like you I love really, it. Yeah, I ride my horse and go train. Like that's, yeah. I genuinely like to do that. Like I don't really get. It's sometimes it's a problem because I do it too much. You know I'll train. You're obsessed with it. Yeah, I mean especially. In, after my losses, my two losses, I got more obsessed with trying to figure out MMA, like how to calm myself down and trying to get better, like working on positions. So, yeah, that's a problem sometimes. But now, I'm luckily for me, I have like, I'm down here. I can just enjoy, ride, ride my horses, let my dogs run around, and and uh, just let the mind relax. Because, like you said, you don't, you you have to, you have you to. You have to turn off. So that's the problem with mixed martial arts at the professional level is in the NFL, they're going to let you know when to take a break. You're going to lose a game. You're not going to make the playoffs. you got a break. There's some out-of-season training, but nothing crazy. In mixed martial arts, it's year-round, man. We don't, yeah. There's no break for you. And if you're obsessed yeah. with it, yeah. that's I why think, you need a coach like well, Greg. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm telling you. Because I'm sure he'll tell you the GSP, exact same yeah. way. Couldn't turn yeah. it off. And maybe I think I'm just, maybe I don't know, maybe it's a paranoia. Maybe I'm paranoid, but I know, like, there's, there's, um, Guys in uh, guys in Dagestan that are training. There's guys all around the world that are trying to Correct. become better it's to get to one goal and be Correct. the best in the world. And yeah. uh, maybe I'm just paranoid, but it keeps me in check. Honestly, yeah, like you have to have I have mentality. to. Yeah. yeah, that Mamba mentality. Yeah, you know? it really work nonstop. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I do. You know, people are like, some people, oh man, you work too hard sometimes. But it's like, I, no. I'm sorry, I'd rather I'd rather work hard than be lazy and and like just. Yeah, I think I the thing you got to worry about is overtraining. So yeah. when you do get to the fight, you're not in yeah. peak performance. No, that's for sure. The yeah. That's where Greg and all the rest of your camp will come in. Mm -hmm. uh, you look great your last fight, so whatever you're doing is working. Prior to that, those two losses, how dark of a time was it? Because, I, I, again, yeah. you, at your age, dealing with that magnitude of, I mean, in fighting, the peaks are fuck, the highest yeah. and the valleys are they're so low. They are yeah. so low, man. And now there's social media. There wasn't too much social media when I was fighting. Yeah. There's some, but not like it is now. Yeah. You gotta hear every opinion now, if you pay attention to it. How, yeah. how, how low did you get? I, honestly, I did get really, really low. Like, I, I really did. 
um, it's just like a weird time. Like you said, with social media, with all kinds of stuff. Like, and I just, I've gotten to the point to learn to like, I don't give a shit what anybody has to say. Like no. if I'm, oh, you suck at this. I, it, I kind of just tune it out. I really do. I don't really go like and listen to, even like when people are saying really good things about me, it like still makes me feel uncomfortable. Even when they're saying bad things, I'm like kind of uncomfortable. So I just kind of like, I got to the mentality where it's like, be feeling sorry for yourself and venting all the time and like, man, I should have done this, I should have done that, is not gonna do shit for you. So that's when I would be, that's when I was just, I was in Albuquerque at the, the gym working my ass off. Like that's, that was my, that was what I was thinking about. Like, I'm not gonna sulk and feel sorry for myself. I'm gonna go in there and uh, figure out what I did wrong. Do work. And do work. Yeah. And, it was a hard time, like a couple of times, like my poor girlfriend, I have to vent sometimes and talk about yeah. it on the kitchen table or like sometimes cry. Like, yeah, and it's yeah. just, she'd always just tell me, it's okay, don't worry, yeah. you're gonna be fine. Just That's do normal. what you keep doing and you're gonna be, you'll be good. And and not to say thing, things won't happen again, but I know I'm more well prepared, strong minded and, and I'll be good. So I, the only thing that I can say, tell the young fighters is, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't try to say, well, I could have done this better. They screwed me on this and that, because that, 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 that shit don't matter. It's no, either black it or white, matter. you yeah. lost. Yeah. Now go back in the gym and figure out what you need to do. To do. Yeah, I think for you too, A, because your age, and B, it's like, you know, we're yeah. in this social media age where it's like, you guys have to, mo mo you know, most athletes don't have to deal with, the, yeah. with this nonstop kind of banter yeah. if you are on social media. Yeah. Like, you know, Michael Jordan and, you know, all these greats, yeah. they, they never have to dealt, deal with any of that stuff. Yeah. Chuck Liddell, you name it, G it's GSP, didn't, they didn't really have yeah. to deal with social media yeah. and g getting critiqued every single time he jumps on that yeah. Instagram. So, if, you know, for the younger fighters, like, dude, that's that's toxic, man. <laughs> yeah. Good or bad. Yeah. Good or, whether it's, they're saying you're the next LeBron James, yeah. or if they're saying you're the next, you know, piece yeah. of shit, none of it matters. Oh, it doesn't. So it's it like, I, I, it's so tough. Even in me as a grown man, two kids at 30, it's, for me, it's tough to be like, all right, dude, you don't need any of it. You don't, yeah. you, nothing good is going to come from that. Yeah. So this new athlete, especially at your age, you guys have to deal with that, man. So just the, the you know, already the pressure of fighting is a lot. But then you gotta deal with that. Yeah. And then on top, I, I think for you, which kind of, you know, a kid with, how many fights do you have total? Eight? Eight. Eight fights? Yeah. Really, anyone, unless you're just this huge, huge, huge phenom these days, with eight fights, no one's really watching you. Yeah. It's really, not not really, yeah. man, you know? Yeah. But with you, you had so much yeah. attention coming in. Not that you wanted it, but it, you know, we all, you know, you have all the skills, so everyone's paying attention to everything you do. So I think that can make it tough, friend. No, it, it's, it's true. And then the biggest thing too is the hardest thing is like you get like, I mean, you're in like when you have two losses, like everybody has an opinion on why you lost. Like, what? what you should have done this. Like, why aren't you relaxing there? Why aren't you using your? Like, why aren't you Even doing your this? Even your aunt. Don't watch fighting, like, dude. I'm telling you, man. You gotta start going for the take. Now. Yeah. Like, and then you hear people like, like. Oh well, why is the promotion doing this? Why are they sitting? It's like I would honestly I got to the point where I would just tell guys like, well, it's true. It's not, at the end of the day, like who I fought, I was a big boy. I signed on the dotted line. Like I was very well capable of winning those fights. Oh yeah. And I didn't. And I didn't win. It was not the promotion's fault. It's not this person's fault. It was my fault. Now looking back. I'm not a manager, I'm not this, I'm a fighter. Like, I'll fight anybody on the planet. Yeah, that's exactly what you should do. Yeah, I, I really, I really, really will. I, I, I remember, you know, in that, that fight that I was working in Mass Square Garden, yeah. I looked at the guy, like, yeah, he's big, you know, he's a big fucking dude. Why, why this for a day? Yeah. And Coker's like, yo, Shab, no one will fight Pico. We can't get anyone to fight this yeah. fucking kid. So we yeah. have to get guys with experience. Yeah. No, no one at his at yeah. his level with his experience will fight him. Yeah. We we've offered the fight to hundreds. That no one's taken it. It's and, like this is what we have to do. And now like I have some like losses on my record. So now people are like, okay, now we kind of know what to now. Now guys, you know, you come know, and get it. Yeah, come and get come it now. Get it, boys. Yeah, but now I'm like, no problem. Yeah. I have everything. I'm, you know, my, my physically, mentally, my team is in line. Like I'm ready. I'm I'm ready for those you know those challenges it's and. Uh, free, man. I was thinking about this today, actually. The feeling that I have, like when I was like on my last two losing, like the two two uh, losing streak, it's two fight losing. It's such a weird feeling. It is a weird feeling, but I still kind of have that in me oh, because yeah. it keeps me in check. Yeah, that'll never leave. That I, chip I, on I, your shoulder. That chip on and and. Are and, you gonna? You're afraid you're gonna lose everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just like it keeps me in check. Like even like after the fight, like I was still in the gym, like you know, uh, running on the treadmill, doing some like because like I don't. 
I want to have that little feeling because the only way I can say is it keeps me in check. Like it really it like should, man. it. I'm in tune. Like yeah. I'm not like losing. Like I'm happy I won. What, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm happy I won, and I t- I won in dominating fashion. But I, at the end of the day, that was at. That was the past. Now it's you know how fighting is. Yeah, it's like man. what's next? What's next? And then you win a world championship. It's like well, how many times can you defend it? It's an ongoing thing until the day you retire. It will never end. And even when you retired, well, why didn't you fight this guy? Oh, you should have fought him. It's never ended. So it's never you just have to just like you said, just keep working and do the do what you can. And yeah, talk, talk to again when you get with George. Talk to George about it. He was just yeah. like. You know, when I retired at the end of the day, it was always like, I never could get rest, man. He's yeah. like, because I was this world champion, I'd go on vacation, and you know, as soon as I beat whoever it is, Johnny Hendricks or Matt Hughes, whoever it is, they go, all right, well, this guy's next. Like, yeah. God damn. How man. would you do with this person? You know? And then if you clean out the, divi- the division, then it's like, go up. Go up, or how would he do no, against double this? <laughs> it's double champs. It's yeah. never going to stop, dude. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, yeah. I never forget with uh, Rashad Evans, he won the belt. And I remember he came to the gym like a week later and he worked his whole training camp with us and Jackson's. And he came and I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm so proud of him. I go, dude, how do you feel? And he like, he's, you know, he sat down and he's like, you want me to be honest with you? He goes, I feel like no different, dude. I yeah. feel exactly the same. Yeah. Still got to put in the work. Oh, still yeah. got to do it. Nothing's changed, bro. Yeah. Like, like he's like, said. this isn't, it's not like you're going to become this world champion that you think you're going to be. And then you get there and you're like, oh, thank God I did it. Yeah. It's, he's just like, it, just yeah. another day, man. But I, now I have other issues. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you win a title, like you win a world title. It's like you're hungry to win the title, but when you win it, you should be starving to keep it. Uh, literally, the toughest job yeah. in sports is defending yeah. a world title. You should, yeah, At you're, certain you're weight classes, it. it's li- the toughest thing to do in the world. But there's nothing starve. tougher. It's the best yeah. of the best coming for you, man. Coming yeah. for you, and they yeah. have tape on you. They have oh, tape, yeah. and then they can download what you're doing now. Yeah, and you got, and then you got coaches like Greg Jackson, all the coaches there that are in his office, like, I'm not joking, breaking every little thing. Yeah, oh, he's throwing in the leg, he's threw 10 in leg and tie kicks here. Okay, write this down. Pick up your tendencies, yeah. Yeah, yeah you should see, like, I mean, with John, so like, they're up in there studying guys, like, to the T for hours, like. It's not Yeah, right? and it's not just Greg Jack, it's all, all the coaches. Are, yeah, it's, it's no secret. There's, there's other coaches all over the world that are breaking, and that's a good thing because it's competition. Competition, it's competition elevates yeah. the game, you yeah. know? So we'll get you out in here because I'm gonna eat more burritos for sure. But and can I have your salsa? <laughs> yeah. um, thanks, dude. They put my salsa in yours. Um, sorry, dude. Um, <clears throat> I've been eyeing it for a while. So, so for you, what if you have a crystal ball? What, what, what's the next two to three years look like for you? How active do you want to be? Is there any fights that you want? Weight classes? I feel good at 145. I really do. I make your like I said. I make my. Uh, featherweight, super, super easy, no problem. But for me, I just want cage time. Yeah. I really want cage time. Really active. I really want to be really active. Is I'm young, um, I'm healthy. Yeah. And um, God willing, I stay um, stay healthy and just take the cage time, the experience. Yeah, that's all. That's all. We had a fight in January. Yeah. First of the year, so it's like. So yeah, I hopefully maybe May, June. Yeah. That'll be nice. I haven't, you know. Maybe get three to four fights this year? Oh, that would, that would be that would be really good. Yeah. Like I said, I I, I like to fight, yeah. and uh, I, that's how we make our money, by fighting. So it yeah. doesn't... It doesn't it's what you do, man. Yeah, it's what I do. So what you that's, do. if they have an opponent for me, line them up and let's yeah. get to work. Because I enjoy being in fight camp. It's, yeah. it's just, I you feel like you're, 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 you're like, everything is in order. You know what, what to do. That's what you're born to do, man. Yeah, so. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But well, for me... You know, we're rooting for you here, man. I've been on the show for a while, and. I'm a big, uh, big fan, man. No, I appreciate I think, you guys you having my things, back. Brother. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know how this game is. Some people are your friends when you're winning, and then when you lose, you don't hear the phone ring all that That's much how it anymore. Goes, brother. Yeah, That's the how phone goes, rings man. a lot when you're winning, but you know you get one or two. I got a maybe feeling like your phone's gonna be ringing a shitload coming up. Bro. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> well, see, people, you, man. Thank you, thank you, appreciate it. In Pico, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>